texts. And it's that which Charlie is decoding that's going to be the source of his book, which is the, the re it's about the reestablishment of, of Ma'at, which involves the reconciliation of the otherwise um, un irreconcilable solar, lunar, and the diacal year. And it's, it's done in a very, a very clever fashion. Um, but the big question, from my point of view, actually, is not so much uh, decoding that, which is important from an Egyptological point of view, but rather it's the age of this particular, this particular part of the temple here. And my guess is, and Charlie thinks so too, that Seti is building his temple in a classical sort of way. I mean, it has the seven sanctuaries and all of that, but it otherwise follows the plan of other uh, New Kingdom temples. And in theory, it should have gone back to here, back further, but not where it ended up. It shouldn't have skewed off to the left as it did, and with the, the, the Ramses hallway and the stairs that lead us here, that Seti in, is, is cutting in his temple, and he comes across the Osirian, this part of the Osirian, probably ruinous, maybe, or anyway, maybe, that's conjecture, and then he decides to skew his old temple around and maybe reconstruct here. There's, there's a lot of open questions here, but it's, it's next to inconceivable given how the Egyptians built their temples. I mean, they built them in all kinds of different ways, but never ever did they cut one into the ground, the, the whole temple. On the other hand, playing my own devil's advocate, because it is supposed to be the tomb of the head of Osiris, maybe this is an exception, and they actually did do this, but stylistically, it's next to impossible to conceive of the same person building the temple we've just spent all this time going through, and then doing this unbelievable thing here with these blocks of granite, which weigh, I'm not exactly sure, but I would, my guess would be upwards of 100 tons. You can figure it out easy enough. Um, Lane, do you know that, that what is it, just, what is it, what is a cubic, yeah, what is a cubic foot of? 150, 145, pounds per cubic foot. Per cubic foot. Of granite? Of granite. 100, say, let's say 150, because that's easy to do with in your head. Cubic feet, these are, I think, I believe they're 12 by 6 by 6. So 6 times 12 is 72, times 6 is, what is that, 6 times 10? 450, right, or something thereabouts? 450 cubic feet times 100, 450 times 100 is 45, 450,000, correct, times 2, yeah, somewhere, somewhere over 100 tons, right, is that correct, who's got one of the quick calculators, anyway, <laughs> something of that nature, and I'll, and I'll bet if you stand what you did in the valley temple, if you stood up on the, on the, on the top there and, and did a look down, and you'll find that they're, that they're absolutely precise. There's not, you know, there's not a hundredth of an inch tolerance uh, in it. So, but when it was done, and I asked Chuck at some point when we were first doing our research, and it looks like it's in crumbly bedrock, right? Where it's cut in over there. <clears throat> and I asked Chuck if that was crumbly bedrock or impacted Nile silt. And he took one look and he said, oh no, it's impacted Nile silt. So, and it's known that in the very, very distant past, there were gigantic floods over a number of years, way higher than anything around today. And if that you could date the Nile silt, because it has all kinds of organic matter in it. So, of course, if you dated it and you got a, 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 an astronomically old time, it doesn't necessarily mean that the temple is coeval with, in other words, that the temple is there before it's covered with silt. could mean that they just cut into the silt and put the temple up but it would be a piece of interesting, enough circumstantial evidence so that, you know, that you'd be inclined to uh, pursue the matter further. I don't know. Anyway, it's in that, that Merneptah there, and then Seti, more on that book of Newt on the hieroglyph over, over underneath there. And uh, it's too bad we can't get in because be, with it nice and dry like this, it'd be nice to sit down and do a 10, 15 minute meditation, but they won't let us, so. Anyway, at least we're here and not shivering and tending below zero cold in New York. Um, <laughs>
And actually, there's a funny story. When we were here filming, this and this goes up and down. It co covers up. It gets pretty. The water gets pretty deep in here. Oh, and there was a couple of feet. Well, a couple of feet oh, of water. Look at the you see that? You see the, the see the water yeah, mark on the water. see the water mark on the ground? So three feet or so. Well, anyway, there was a lot of water in there, and. Um, I was there. Well, they had lots of. They were growing. They was all covered with with plants growing in there, and lots of catfish swimming around. Because the guard brought in some catfish, and they had a free source of of, um, of of fish to eat, and and millions and millions and millions of tadpoles all over the place. And anyway, I was there with Shock and with Boris, and Boris, you know, man of action. Uh, has a camera on his on his on his back, and he takes the tripod in one of those big old you know beta cam things, and he's wading into the water. He you know, pulls his pant, his, his, his uh, rolls his pant legs up, and strides off into the water. And Chuck, who's in those days particularly very cautious, um, said, "No, John, you shouldn't do that. For you know there are all kinds of parasites and organisms in the water are dangerous. And Boris looks around and says, yeah, you could catch Tad Polio. <laughs> <laughs> so we got, our, we got our footage in. And at the same time, actually, interestingly enough, because the Osiris is associated with fertility. And while we were filming, a woman came down with her daughter, you could tell her mother and daughter, um, to the to the to, to the water's edge, and completely oblivious to us doing what we were doing, the the daughter is scooping water up and up her up her up her galabea, and to the locals that was a way of ensuring fertility. So, um, oh. so you know, in other words, it lives on. And sometimes in certain of the temples, in the Sphinx, sometimes oh now not because they've got this, the wall of Zahi around. So the so the locals can't get in, but you'd find little balls of paper, you know, covered, cut, sewn up with string, of somebody, you know, a petition, a prayer, like a votive prayer, was in, in with the Sphinx, who was reputed to have, you know, magical, black magical powers actually by the by the locals. Abu Hol, they call him in Arabic, which means the father of terror. John, where does the water come from? The groundwater. It's groundwater. Yeah, and Wrong so the level of the Nile is the level of the groundwater determines how much water is in here. At one point they put in, because when there's lots of water, they put in um, pumps to pump it out. But of course, once the pumps went into disrepair, which took, I think, probably two or three weeks, they never repaired them again. So anyway, but that's where the water comes from. Do you think it was from. designed to have the water in there? Like a, like I don't know, because that it would be a good study, because where was the water level? At right. what point, when, when, when was it there? It looks like it's designed where the, the central uh, wells are there. It looks like it, it's supposed to be there, but whether or not it's, and it's deep. They've measured it, that those, those, those shafts go down, I think, 17 meters, 50 feet, something like that. Those shafts? I believe what? so. I believe so. Those the center wells. wells. The center shafts. Wow. The, trap, the center wells, yeah. Hmm? I believe so, yeah. Meters. 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 Yeah, John? I believe so, yeah. Why do you think this very temple has wells? Why? I, I have no idea. I mean, it's a great mystery. So I don't know. There, I mean, I think that legendary, oh, yeah. in other words, it has something to do with, with Osiris consciousness, but, you know, from time immemorial before there's, a, before there's dynastic Egypt. That's my, that's my guess. Because they don't do things like this. But how do we know that if right. it's pre-dynastic, it has anything to do with oh, Osiris? What else, what else do we don't know, but 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 things you can't you can't be sure. But the Osirian, I mean, it goes back to pre-dynastic times anyway. Mm. And, and and when you study the stuff, the cosmologies are there to begin with. You know the cos. I mean. You can, yeah, with Gobekli Tepe, you I can really yeah. prove that. So there's every reason, there's every reason to believe that it did go back. Let's go, says people waiting to get in there. Let's go. Um.